Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I just want to go ahead and update you guys a little bit with the progress. I haven't done a progress update video in a tad bit. So let's just keep up to date. The Caustic Arrow Trickster is level 96. Now remember this is SSF Delve. Um, so everything is solo cell found. I'm wearing a full magic find set. With the full magic find set, I actually ended up finding a Beast Ghost Collar, which is kind of odd. The entire purpose of this magic finding was to find a Storm Heart, which worked! So that was pretty fucking cool. Um, the Storm Heart is going to be used for the next build called our Glacial Hammer that we're remaking. We originally had a Glacial Hammer Champion, but before I leveled it too far, I noticed a lot of issues, like mainly lack of AoE. A lot of people told me use Melee Splash. I said, I'm not going to use Melee Splash because I'm using the Melee Splash uh, jewel for it. And then I don't think people realize if you use Ancestral Call, Melee Splash with a Name Lock skill, you're just really diminishing your damage a lot. So I'd rather just remake it to be a more successful build. Now, Stormheart itself is not that good of a weapon, and the ideal goal for the Glacial Hammer build is a Hegemony's Era, but Stormheart does have a prophecy upgrade, uh, which is called Storm Wall, which is here. Um, you just have to feed Popero, which is the guy of uh, 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 Plateau, which I didn't even know there was a guy named Popero. And uh, just to bring up Storm Wall to show you the damage on it, let me just pull it up. This is a Storm Wall. It rolls a top end of 420. Don't worry about the six can roll really high crit, has super good block base. Uh, on top of that, you get 50% fizz converted to cold, 50% fizz converted to lightning, and you can try to do some gimmick here. But the main thing about this is, I could be wrong, but I believe this is how it's gonna work. So we're gonna use Glacial Hammer, that's 50% conversion. We're gonna use the Threshold Jewel for the Melee Splash, that gives us 75% conversion, and we have 50 and 50 conversion here. So. Either it's going to take Lightning as the first, because Lightning is first in the order, so it would be 25% Lightning, but I think it's going to take 12.5% Cold and 12.5% Lightning and add that on top to get 100% conversion. If it does that, that would be perfect, because as an Inquisitor, we, are, we don't need to scale Penetration, so we'll have 12.5% Lightning, which should be enough to shock most things when you factor in Scaling Crit Multiplier. Um, so anyway, that was just kind of cool. I'm really happy to get this character finally started. Um, just to give you guys a rundown of what I did to farm this weapon, you may not like it, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you anyway. Uh, if you guys are familiar with what I did for Quill Rain, uh, I basically did the same thing, except I did it for Stormheart, and it was a little bit longer of a journey. Um, if you see here, I found over 100 unique items. That's no exaggeration, completely legit. Um, they did buff the hidden walls quite a bit. You find a ton of uniques in them now. Um, and that's something else I want to kind of bring up is farming a lore weave in SSF is easier than ever now if you do uh, basically hidden wall farming. If you just look here at, for example, how many combs signs I have, um, it's a clear indication of how much you can get from delving now. So. If you're looking for a lore weave, I don't even know if you need to do the low level delves, but jump right into delve, blow up all the walls. You're gonna find a ton of uniques. Look for the accessory one. It's kind of RNG, but you'll find a bunch of rings in here. Um, it's just five rows, five rows? Yeah, for a lore weave. So we're already good to go. Uh, some other things that we've been doing, uh, we have been farming Red Elder. Uh, if I look over here in the, I think it's a big dick tab. Uh, oh, I forgot I need to go put that in the tab too. Maybe it's not big dick. Where is it? Oh yeah, we found the Cospreys, so that was pretty cool. Um, I don't think I'm gonna make a build with Cospreys, but it's just nice, a nice item. We also have a Gloom Fang that we found. There is, sorry, I have so many tabs now, it's hard to keep everything organized. We found a Two Socket Light Poacher. Uh, this is Mr. Glacial Hammer tab, once we start leveling him. There was a tab that I wanted to show you guys. Oh, Elder tab, where's Elder tab? Eld, here. We've got two Watcher's Eyes. Now, um, one of them actually rolled the clarity, so gain maximum energy shield, as, wait, gain percentage of mana as extra maximum energy shield while affected by clarity. This pairs extremely well with a Shabs in Presence of Chalupa for a low life Righteous Fire. Now I said I wasn't going to be playing Righteous Fire again, but the game is telling me to play low life Righteous Fire, so we're going to hold off. Glacial Hammer is more important for me, but if I feel like making something OP, it's right there for us. So that was really cool. 
Uh, other than that, we found a Nebulok as well. We'd probably ideally want two Nebuloks before we do anything with that. Um, yeah, everything has been going pretty cool with the SSF journey. One huge advantage to low-level delving and just delving in general. Um, previously when I played SSF, if you guys remember my attempt to try to find Hrim Sorrow in Incursion League or try to find Pledge of Hands previously and on other SSF leagues, with Delve's introduction, it's really cool because you find so much currency. Uh, I use 400 scours and 400 chances to try to get a Stormheart. Failed. The reason why I scoured is because it was so rare to find the base. Then for another 400 uh, of them, I would basically just delved. Did not end up finding it through chancing at all after 800 chances. Got lucky on the drop, so that was really cool. But look at all these extra chaos. Like this was from, I don't know, maybe five hours of delving. I know that's a lot, but my goal wasn't to farm currency. It was to farm a Stormheart. And all of this chaos is perfect for Zana when you're rolling things, for example, like doing shape tier 1 to tier 10. Uh, the reason why this is good is because, say you're doing Elder Influence and say Elder, say right here, Museum. A tier 9 map doesn't do anything, but I can make it tier 14 for 6 chaos, and all of a sudden it can now drop tier 15 maps, a chance at tier 16, and I'm not really wasting my time. And then plus you have like Divination card drops as well, so that's why chaos is super, super good in this league. At least for solo self-found. Um, and yeah, everything has gone pretty well. Uh, Zug Zug is chilling as well. He still has a Tabula Rasa. Um, I did skin it with, um, with, uh, 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 Minotaur's chest because then people think that the character is as tanky as it looks and, you know, then we don't really have that confusion. We ended up not chancing Empire's Grasp, but we found them, um, randomly so we have the sucken totems which are pretty cool they're really nice for running things that are taunt immune because you can just pull them in anyway and they don't actually get to do anything uh zug zug has downed shaper i've never died to shaper yet actually technically i took a, a slam on stream just to see if i could take it and i'm pretty sure it crit me because it killed me um but he's been doing pretty much everything deathless. I've got Red Elder on farm. Red Elder is a bit spooky because I don't do that much damage to the portals. I'm sure if I use Scorching Ray, like if I use a 4-link with increased duration, Frost Wall, Scorching Ray. Or maybe just 3-link. Oh, faster casting. There we go. Um, that'll probably help a lot on the portals, but I'm still learning the Elder fight. And there's just so much shit thrown at you at once. So basically, I just Frost Wall up Shaper and make sure he can't die. And then I just tank everything else and, and you know, everything's been pretty much fine. Um, the real big goal, I guess, this league is still, if I'm trying to do it with Shockwave Totem, which I am, it's a really frustrating fight, is, uh, Mr., where is he? Crystal King, bro? Crystal King, boy, here, this guy. All the Crystal King has been a very, very fr stressful fight for Shockwave Totem. Uh, we're still trying to learn it. It's just he does so much damage, and he's taunt immune. I don't even know if he's taunt immune to begin with, but... It's just difficult because Shockwave Totem's limited range, and I have to just constantly keep replacing Totems. Every time I place a Totem, I stand still. When I stand still, he can hit me. If he hits me with his Ice Crystal Shard, it does like 6.8k with Fortify and Totem Reduction on, and it's hard to time a Sapphire Flash when you don't even know what's happening because you're trying to like place down the Totems and get out of the way. Um, but this is definitely a big goal for us. And then probably just farming Shaper until I can get a Dying Sun for the Caustic Arrow character. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start leveling the Glacial Hammer, bro. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not going to upgrade this to Stormwall until, like, I get to 68 or whenever Stormwall is because there's not really much of a point. And I've got two Divines plus four extra Divines here ready to go for whenever, basically, I need to uh, Divine it to get it pretty good. And that's pretty much about it. So, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'm super excited for the Glacial Hammer Inquisitor. Um, if the build ends up not being what I wanted, I might just try to chance and impulse us and see where that takes us. But anyway, for now, I'm out. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. But remember, if you're interested, if you don't... Pfft, Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox.